Um, this is the UK government's um, official legislation website. Um, there's a few things to talk about this. The first is um, something around how legislative information is captured in the UK. Um, and um, message number one is that legislation is data. It's really important data. It's actually very rich as data. Um, it's probably one of the most under-exploited data resources that we have at the moment. The second is that um, legislation um, is interesting in UK governments being one of the best examples we have of being able to capture on a routine basis across government high quality data um, and publish that very, very quickly and make that available for reuse in raw formats under an open license. And the reason we're able to do that is because of the tools that are in place to support the capture of legislation by the people that are drafting it. So there's a template tool. There's also a validation process, a validation template, um, that means that um, the person that's creating the information is also checking it, and they're going through an iterative process to make sure that the information that they're creating is obeying the rules that it needs to abide by. And that means that although the information is authored by um, the government legal service, so two and a half thousand lawyers across all different government departments, the information is of a consistently high quality. And it's published routinely, every day, like that, to that consistent high quality. And that's because of tooling and validation and verification of the information in a distributed way. And when you get those sorts of mechanisms up in place and they work, they work brilliantly well and they're sustainable. Um, some of the tools, of course, have been around for a while, um, so you're looking at like version 10 of this, or whatever, version 10 of the particular template that's used for drafting statutory instruments. Um, but there's um, this piece around capturing high quality information is about the tooling, it's about providing support, I and mean, it is about engaging authors with the process of making sure that their data is accurate and giving them some mechanism for being able to test that for themselves and to improve the quality of their own information. That's a really, really key message if we're going to make open data um, routine, business as normal activity and high quality. Uh, so I'm going to talk a bit about um, why legislation data is a particular challenge uh, for uh, presenting and then I'm going to talk about some of the patterns that we've put in place on legislation.gov.uk in order to hopefully make it more reusable by other people. Um, and I'm just going to demo it on the site itself. Um, So, this is the legislation.gov.uk website at legislation.gov.uk. Um, the first point I wanted to make is that we have a large range of different types of legislation that we have to handle. So that's one of the things that makes legislation difficult. We've got lots of different types. There's stuff that's published currently, um, and there's also stuff that goes back to, uh, what's our earliest one, 1467? 12. 1267, thank you. So, so, the, so you know, that wasn't available in XML in those days, it turns out. Um, so the, there's, a, there's a wide variety of kind of formats uh, that we have to start with. Um, the other thing, as John touched on, is that we have new legislation coming in every day. So this is a, something that changes on a daily basis as a site. And um, the legislation content itself is very complicated. It's, it's kind of structured, sort of, semi-structured really, data, legislation is data, but uh, it has a lot of um, changes that go into the individual items of legislation. You can see them marked up here. Uh, so that every day, even existing items of legislation will get changed as well. Um, so keeping track of all those changes and making them available and showing timelines and things like this is part of uh, what makes legislation data so hard. So in order to, obviously we've got a nice pretty website that people can, uh, that end users are supposed to be able to go around and use and be able to get the legislation out, but we also wanted to make sure that it was available for other people to build services on top of. So we have a number of patterns that we use um, for each of these items of uh, legislation. Any page that you go to, really, on, on legislation.gov.uk, you can use these patterns in order to get hold of the raw data that underlies the HTML presentation that you see. 
So um, on any page that shows some content of legislation, you can use slash data.xml at the end of it, and you get the XML data that you can then transform in whatever way you want to get some different presentation. We have some RDF metadata about each piece. Um, we have a x.xht gives you a um, snippet of HTML that you can embed within your own pages if you want to have it kind of formatted up in the, in the standard way from that XML. Um, and we also, through the same pattern, have PDF versions of all this legislation because people like to read PDF. So all of those different presentations get, get developed, delivered just like that. The other thing to mention is that uh, whenever you have a feed, whenever you have a search result, any kind of search result, these are always available as feeds with a slash data dot feed at the end. You'll get your um, atom feed of that, that search result. So this is to aid discovery of the data as well. So through, there's a pretty HTML veneer over the top of a very powerful API at the back end that we hope that will enable people to take that data and reuse it on their own sites. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, legislation and linked data. So for those of you that don't know, um, linked data boils down to two ideas. Um, one is about giving URIs, so web-based identifiers to things, and the other is about using this language called RDF, which is a very flexible model for representing data, um, to start to connect information about things together. Um, and um, we're moving into a world where we have um, new types of information infrastructure, um, and some of the work that's happening, for example, in data.gov.uk is about building some of the core pillars of that information infrastructure. So there are things that we know about, like you know, location and postcode, really, really important in our society that we have good web-based identifiers um, that we can use in our data around locations and, for example, postcodes. Um, we need good mechanisms, good ways to be able to talk about time um, so that we can refer to time instances, time periods, time intervals. Um, the statute book is a marvellous source of conceptual data. So if you've got a database with schools in it, every one of the 20 different, 27 different types of school in the United Kingdom is defined by statute. It's full of lists. It's full of lists of government departments that have to submit their accounts. Um, there's an appropriation act every year that will tell you each government department its main objectives and how much money it spends. Um, there are lists of... Um, allowed substances for use in food products, there are lists of roads that are going to be closed for maintenance and on and on and on and on. So this is an amazing source, an amazing conceptual source, um, amazing source of conceptual data that just needs a little bit more to be exposed. We have, with Legislation Book Up UK, we've taken the first step by designing a high quality URI set, a high quality approach to being able to reference legislation. Um, at, at different points in time with different levels of granularity. And by making available the underlying XML information, um, it makes it very easy to start adding lightweight um, transformations to expose some of the conceptual some of the conceptual richness that's in this very important source of, um, of information and data. 